And boy, I think of a state like California and the high value manufacturing that exists there. And I, I, I visited some companies in, in, in California one time, and uh, I'd like to yield to Mr. Bilbray, who has been a leader on uh, uh, moving some of the, the packages of bills now to help streamline the FDA and, and modernize the FDA as well. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the gentleman. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Paulson's leading on not just an issue of jobs. Uh, this is an issue of jobs and lives, and I think that that's one thing we overlook so often. Um, I am glad to hear about the, the hearing in Indianapolis because we had a hearing in San Diego. Um, I'm sure that you guys are glad that you didn't have to come to the hearing in San Diego because we were in La Jolla overlooking the beach and the surf at the, at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. But um, maybe someday you'll be able to break away and come to one of our hearings down in uh, San Diego. But, Mr. Speaker, we're talking about an issue that is not discussed enough about. And I guess one of the issues that I'm really excited about on this one is that it's a bipartisan effort. And I think if there was one thing I want everyone to know about Washington, D.C., Democrat, Republicans, or Independents, is the biggest problem with this town isn't that Washington tries new things or that Washington makes mistakes. But when Washington tries new things and makes mistakes, they're not willing to go back and correct it and straighten it out. They ignore it. In fact, a lot of times they think the only problem is just throw more money or more taxes at it, more regulation, and somehow it will make it better. I think th this is one of those items where Democrats and Republicans ought to get together and say, look, this was rushed through, really wasn't looked into in depth, and needs to be corrected and straightened out. And that's what this bill, both, both the gentleman's bill and my bill, say we need a time uh, – a step back period, a cooling off time, and let's look at this and straighten this out. And the first thing we got to do is take this huge tax off the back of not just the producers, but the American um, consumer. And we're talking about a tax of $20 billion on an industry that can ill afford this kind of burden, especially at this time. We're talking in California alone of 112 jobs, um, something that I think that 112,000 jobs. And, uh, something that all of us will say later we lose these jobs, oh my God, how could have we have done this? Um, more importantly, we're talking about those lives of people that depend on not just those devices that are out there today, but those that will be out there in the future. Is there anyone here that can uh, assure themselves that their children or grandchildren or granddaughter or grandson or even their, their mother or their grandparents will not need to have medical devices somewhere down the line, not just to improve the quality of life, but to assure life extensions, or the fact of just being able to survive certain medical crises. Those are all questions we got to ask ourselves individually. But as a nation, we have to ask ourselves, was this the right step for us to take at this time or at any time? And if it wasn't, we've got to be brave enough to do what Washington doesn't do enough, and that is go back, correct the mistake, and move on in a much better and much more secure form, something that can be substantiated. And let me be very blunt, as somebody who has a major um, uh, medical device uh, industry in my community, that there are ways we can correct these things. Uh, Anna Ashu and I, back in, in the 90s, actually did tort reform for medical devices. There was the kind of bipartisan support of saying, Put, take politics aside and put people first, and when it comes down to it, you do not provide health care to the public by taxing it out of the country. You're not going to make those kind of opportunities available to either the people that need the jobs or those who need the medical breakthrough. So I want to say again that I look forward to working on this. I look forward to working in a bipartisan effort with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle at things like FDA reform which is going to be another essential step that we have to do to make sure we keep this vibrant industry here, one that we will all rue the day, Democrat or Republican, if we allow it to leave the country and the jobs and the medical breakthroughs go with them. The other is also, too, that huge resources we have for more research and development to be brought back into this country by repatriating American money that's overseas, that is being kept overseas, but because of punitive actions of the federal government here in Washington, Two trillion dollars that could come back to help do research and development to save lives, to develop the next generation of medical devices, to be able to create that opportunity in economics and in medical breakthroughs. That's the kind of thing we need to see Democrats and Republicans work together on. I look forward to building on 
the uh, cooperation we see in this bill and work on it on other bills related to public health and the economic opportunities of creating jobs on, in America with American jobs on American soil. And I yield back to the gentleman. Yeah, and I, and I thank the gentleman for being a leader. And, you know, when you th folks think of states like California, they think of high technology and medical devices. But it's